Have you ever thought something was something and then you realized it was something else entirely? In 2016, I was with a pilgrimage group uh, of young adults and we were standing outside the cathedral in Naples. And one of the priests who was with us was telling us about the relics of the saint who was, was in a tomb in this cathedral, Saint Januarius, who was a bishop and he was martyred in the year 305. And Father's speaking and he's talking about these relics and there's two, two vials of these saints' blood and they're dry, and normally these vials are dried blood, but on certain occasions they liquefy. A very unusual uh, situation. Yes, there's unusual events that around miracles. Miracles draw our attention to God's grace. So they're unusual at times. The priest was explaining that they liquefy on his feast day and at times when popes visit him. And he starts talking about all these popes that have witnessed this liquefaction. He's talking about how recently Pope Francis was videotaped when, when he came and visited uh, this cathedral. But then he said, when Pope Benedict came, they didn't liquefy. Hit me like a ton of bricks. I really like Pope Benedict. Reading his stuff is like listening to my favorite music, but better. It's like reading a symphony of sense. I'm starting to really feel defensive on behalf of Benedict. What is this? Everybody's streaming into the church. Uh, they're going towards the, the relics. I am making a beeline for the source, for the tomb of St. Januarius. I go down these spiral staircases. This tomb is underneath the altar. I cross over, I stand beside a pillar, and I am knee deep in censure. I'm just having this really intense conversation with St. Januarius. I'm solid, I'm still, and I'm like this, and I'm standing by the pillar, and I'm like, come on, Marie Therese. I mean, calm down. <laughs> but I was there for a long time, and in a certain moment, my eyes fly open because something's touched my hand, and I, my eyes fly open to this, I'm staring in the face of a lanky Italian boy who's standing over me, and his, when my eyes fly open, his eyes become filled with terror. He backs up into the tomb of St. Januarius, yelling, Statua! <laughs> I was standing there so still and so stiff for so long that him and his brother were observing me and they must have thought I was a statue. And eventually they couldn't handle this anymore because I was so lifelike. So he touches my hand, the statue's eyes fly open. Can you imagine this poor boy? And they race up those spiral staircase terrified. When Father came and found me, I was there laughing, like eyes closed, I'd forgiven January is everything and I'm just laughing. The boys thought I was something that I was not. I was explaining this story to a friend of mine who's a priest who likes Benedict as much as I do. And he said, oh yeah, I remember when that happened. I was following it. And he's like, I just figured that Pope Benedict's faith isn't based on any kind of uh, miraculous situations. Pope Benedict's faith is built on the solid rock of the teachings of the church and of what Christ, what God has revealed, of, of scripture and the church and tradition. Nothing changes the fact that Jesus said, for example, when he established the sacraments, the sacrament of baptism, go therefore make disciple of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and our faith teaches us we become children of God. Well, that doesn't change if something happens or doesn't happen. We're children of God. Or the sacrament of Holy Communion. When Jesus says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. The sacrament of Holy Eucharist is, is God giving himself completely to us. What does our Lord say about the sacrament of confession? Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. What could be better? I go to confession often because I need healing. And I empty out whatever is in me that is not of God, that is not of love. And I leave the confessional absolutely free. And then I receive our blessed Lord and I am filled with the God himself, his holy presence, his holy, sacred, physical presence. Augustine talking about the power, the love of the Holy Eucharist says, 
Although God is all-powerful, He is unable to give more. Though supremely wise, He knows not how to give more. Though vastly rich, He has no more to give. Living in a world where there's so much is going on, it's hard to even hear myself think and hear my heart be. This is our faith and it is incredible and it's unchanging. Let's turn to another Italian uh, boy, Blessed Pier Giorgio Fassati. In 1901, he was born in Italy, and he was raised in a not, not zealously Catholic home at all. In fact, his sister writes in a book about him that their family didn't even say prayer before the meals. He developed a deep prayer life and a love for Holy Mass and the Blessed Sacrament at a young age. He says, Jesus comes to me in Holy Communion every day, and he visits me there, and I visit him by going to the poor. So he would visit the poor after school. He was studying in university. He wasn't a great student, but he worked really hard. His love for, for the Eucharist made him want to share that with everybody. And so he'd go to the, he'd go play pool with his friends, and he's like, you win, I'll pay you money. I win, you come with me to the church, and we have a holy hour of prayer together. And I know that I don't have to worry about what tomorrow When he was 24 years old, he contacted polio, and for six days he was suffering intensely. But even while he was suffering, he was focusing, focused on others. So many poor people came to his funeral, his parents were absolutely shocked. They'd had no idea. This Eucharistic love that was in Pierre filled him with joy. He said, modern society is drowning in the sorrows of human passions, and it is distancing itself from every ideal of love and peace. Catholics, we and you must bring the breath of goodness that can only spring from faith in Christ. Faith is what enables me to know that history is not chaotic. Sin is chaotic. Turning away from God is chaotic. But God is not chaotic. God is unchanging. And God has a plan of blessing for each one of us. My heart.